Amen? Amen. We talk about salvation. We talk about the cross. We talk about that Jesus died, rose again on the third day. Oh, yeah. And when we put our faith in him, he justifies us as a believer. Yeah. He washes us in his blood. He treats us as if, amen, we have never done anything wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's a blessing. And that would be enough to shout on, but the story of the gospel does not end there. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he does something for us in his resurrection that he could not do the whole 33 years that he lived and walked among us. Yes. Hallelujah. When Christ came in the flesh, he was limited to location and space. Yes. He could only be in one place at one time. Y'all ain't here. Yeah. But when he gave us the ghost, the Bible said, and the disciples received the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, He's now able to be in multiple locations at one time. Yeah. Are you hearing? Oh, yeah. Ah, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, however you want to say it, it's the same thing. Hallelujah. I just like Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost just sounds like it got some kick back to it. Somebody call you on the phone and say, I just got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Something make you want to rejoice on it. Yeah, you got oh, yeah. the Holy Ghost. When they call and say, I, I just received the Holy Spirit. It just sounds, yeah. Yeah. Okay. you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's the same thing, but, but the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. But this business of the Holy Ghost is something, amen, that has been a quandary for the church. Uh -huh. Amen. I want you to understand something that the canon of Scripture closed in the first century. In other words, the Scripture was closed, amen, when the last original apostle left on the scene. So nobody else could come and rewrite scripture or rewrite church doctrine. Amen. However, certain of these 300 bishops come in the third century and they say that the canon of scripture, amen, closes 300 years after. Mm -hmm. Now somebody said, well, what that got to do with me? Hallelujah. Let me talk to you for just a little bit. When they closed the canon of scripture 300 years later, that gives a man, men that are not inspired with the Holy Ghost, a man, the ability, a man, to change and to rewrite things, a man, that the apostles and the Lord Jesus left on record. And along with a man, this Change comes the doctrine of cessation, or cessation, to stop or to cease. And praise the Lord, St. Augustine comes with a new doctrine saying that the Holy Ghost baptism and the gifts of the Spirit stop at the early church, meaning that uh, nobody in this day and age is speaking with tongues. Nobody in this day and age is proper. There are no healings and there are no miracles taking place, amen. And so a lot of Christian denominations have taken hold of that cessationist belief, amen. And praise the Lord, preachers don't preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And what you don't get preached to, you don't have faith to believe in. Amen. If nobody tells you that God don't want you to walk in poverty and tell you that, beloved, above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in hell even as your soul. If nobody preaches that to you, then you don't have the faith to believe it. Yes. That's 
Right. Right. Nobody tells you, amen, that you can come out of bondage, that you don't have to live, amen, in the hell that Satan has built for you, amen. You think that you have to suffer and stay in that position, amen. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so God, amen, has commanded the preacher, amen, to preach and to teach God's word in order that the people of God would have faith to believe what God said. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when you talk about prayer, I'm going to take my time today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When we hear the word Pentecost, the first thing we think about is a denomination. Uh, what denomination? I'm Pentecostal. I'm Holiness. I'm Baptist. I'm Presbyterian. I'm Catholic. Amen. We, 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 we make a denomination, amen, out of something. But to give you understanding for those of you that are taking notes, Pentecost was not a denomination. Amen. Pentecost was a date or a feast. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible teaches us, amen, that there were three major feasts, amen, that the children of Israel participated in every year. The Bible says, amen, three times a year, say, every male, amen, present themselves before the Lord. And the first feast, amen, was the Feast of Passover. Amen. And the Feast of Passover, amen, recognized when the God brought them out of Egypt. He killed the firstborn, amen, of Pharaoh. And he saved the children of Israel because the lamb was killed and the blood was smeared on their doorposts. Amen. That night they ate unleavened bread and bitter herbs, amen. Praise the Lord, because the next morning they would take their flight out of Egypt. God delivered them out of Egypt. And so, praise the Lord, Passover marks the beginning of the Jewish calendar of the Jewish year. Amen. It is a time of freedom that the Lord brought them out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then there is the Feast of Pentecost. And Pentecost means 50 days. It is 50 days after the Passover. Pentecost, amen, is a celebration of harvest. Amen. The gathering, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the blessing, the increase and the overflow. It is, amen, Pentecost. And then, praise the Lord, the last feast is the Feast of Tabernacles. Somebody say Tabernacles. Amen. amen. The Feast of Tabernacles deals with the ingathering, praise the Lord. Deals with the protection of God, how God keeps you. During the Feast of Tabernacles, Israel, a man would dwell. They wouldn't stay in their homes, but they would go in booths, uh, uh, small booths, tent like tents, amen, and they would dwell in the tents, and what it would signify, it would signify that God was their protection, and that he kept them from everything that was going on in the world. Can I take a few minutes? Amen. Praise God. Everything that happened in the Old Testament was, amen, pointing to the fulfillment in the New Testament. Hallelujah. So when you read these old things, praise the Lord, I know, amen, it's boring sometimes to sit there and read it and try to make heads or tails, but it's all pointing to Jesus. Everything in the scriptures is pointing to Jesus. Amen. In the time of Jesus, Jesus said, amen, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And when he said search the scriptures, he was not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because there was no New Testament. All they had, amen, was Genesis to Malachi, praise the Lord. And praise our God, they were able, amen, to see Jesus in every book of the Old Testament and they were able to convert people to believing in Jesus because they could read the word and see Jesus in the word. Uh, Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. I mean, and so, praise the Lord, when we look at these three different feasts, these feasts, amen, deal with a period or a time in which God is going to do something for, amen, his people. Amen. The feast of the Passover, amen, when he brought Israel out of Egypt is a signification of what Jesus did when he brought us out of sin, amen, through his death and sacrifice on the cross. I know 
it was the blood, I know it was the blood that saved me. Amen. This perfect lamb sacrificed himself and died on the cross. Amen. And his blood brought me out of Egypt, brought me out of the world, brought me out of sin. Praise the Lord. Y'all ain't hear me. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. But amen. And that was good that he did it, but he didn't leave me. Amen. At the cross. Praise the Lord. This comes Pentecost. And, and it was no accident that the Holy Ghost would come on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Can I talk for a few minutes? Oh, yeah. Amen. Pentecost, amen, was the mark of a new era. It was the mark of a new dispensation. Amen. Of God using his people in a way that they had never been used before. Every time God decides to make a change, amen, it happens in 40s. Y'all ain't understanding me. Hallelujah. 40, amen, is the number of establishment. Amen. Whenever, praise the Lord, God got tired of the sins of the world, he would call a man by the name of Noah and say, 40 days, I'm going to let it rain on the earth. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to clear it out. Amen. And I'm going to start with a new order. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. 40 days when Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he took them to a Mount, Mount Sinai and he went up in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights to receive the law. Amen. They came out, amen, a people, but it was at Mount Sinai that he, amen, made them a nation by giving them the law. Amen. He did it in 40s, amen. When he got ready to judge Nineveh, amen, he sent Jonah into Nineveh, amen, a three days journey in one day, crying out, and yet 40 days will, amen, Nineveh be overthrown. Y'all ain't like understand me? When Jesus was about to be sent on his ministry, directly after he was baptized of John and Jordan, the Holy Ghost immediately drives him out into the wilderness, amen, to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. Because he had to establish something. Hallelujah. Praise our God. So what we see here in the first chapter of Acts is the precedent being repeated. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says 40 days the Lord stayed with them after his passion and he talked with them for 40 days. Praise the Lord. He had to establish. There were some things that he talked to the disciples about in that The Bible says he suffered with them. He taught them, amen, after his passion. Hallelujah, I'm getting ready to go away. And there's some things I got to talk to y'all about. And so could you imagine, amen, having your risen Savior with you? you. Amen. After he had rose from the dead, you saw him amen, hang on the cross. You saw his lifeless river mortis body wrapped a man in the grave clothes and you saw them put him in the tomb and, and roll the stone on him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you know that death, amen, had taken over him. Praise the Lord. And yet he rose again, amen, on the third day. And not only did he rise again, but he comes uh, to his disciples and shows himself to them for 40 days in his glorified body. Amen. Walking through doors, walking through walls. Amen. But he was not a spirit. He was a body. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it was a glorified body. And he sits there and he teaches them about the mysteries of the faith. You see, because I'm about to leave you. And when I leave you, I can't leave you not understanding what it is. Before I spoke to you in parables, but now I'm going to tell you plainly because you are my apostles. And he looks at them and says, hallelujah, behold, hallelujah, I'm going away. He says, but I want you to tarry and stay in Jerusalem until you be endowed with power from on high. He said, ye shall receive power the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. But wait until 
until you get the power. Tell somebody to wait <laughs> until you get the power. <laughs> Tell you that's what's wrong with the churches today. You got folk that are educated. You got folk, praise the Lord, that are religious, but they don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. They did not wait to get endued with the power. That's why they're splitting up churches and making mess of the word of God. That's why the sheep are being scattered all over. Because folk don't have the Holy Ghost. Can I preach like I feel it this morning? And so praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus ascends up into heaven. Amen. On the outside of Jerusalem. Amen. About at the place of the Mount of Olives. And he lifts up his hands to bless them. And as he lifts up his hands to bless them, the Bible says that he is received by a cloud out of their sight. Amen. Praise our God. And now they're standing there looking at Jesus going away. Amen. Two men in white apparel stand and say, Ye men of Judea, why stand ye here gazing? Amen. This same Jesus which is taken from you will return in the like manner that he has come. But he told you to go to Jerusalem. So you better go to Jerusalem. And so, amen, the apostles, the 11 that are now left, because Judas is dead now, amen, journeys to the upper room. Dare I say, it is that same room in which Jesus gave the last supper, praise the Lord. It is that large room that is furnished, that upper room, amen. The Bible says that they gathered in that upper room, and there were about 120 of them, amen, amen waiting on the promise of the Father. Now they didn't know what to expect. They just knew that the Holy Ghost was coming. Amen. They just knew it was coming. Every prophet amen, since John the Baptist was telling them about the Holy Ghost. John was saying, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But there is one that is coming after me who is mightier than I. And I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose his shoes. Hallelujah. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Even to the point, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where John recognized the ending of his ministry. For when Jesus showed up at the spirit of the dove descending upon him, the Lord spoke to him and said, This is he that is going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. And he pointed to his disciples and said, Behold, this Jesus, he is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. He must increase and I must decrease. In other words, I'm going to shut my meeting down. I'm going to shut my church down. And now you need to go and follow Jesus. How many preachers do we have today that will recognize the ending of their assignment and be humble enough to shut it down? Fulfilled what he wanted to do. Everything in John the Baptist was fulfilled, and he shut it down. And then when he shut it down, you don't hear about John preaching no more in the wilderness. You don't see him baptizing nobody else because he shut it down. Because this was the mark of a brand new era, praise the Lord. And from that point in time, Jesus would get to preach. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So with this in mind, praise the Lord. The disciples, amen, are now journeying to Jerusalem. Amen. To go to the upper room. And as they are going to the upper room, they remember that Jesus said, John verily baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. I come to tell you, praise the Lord, that if you go down in the water right, you'll come up with the Holy Ghost. If you go down in the water right, you'll come up with the power of God. And the Bible says it will happen not many days hence. Can I talk for just a minute? And so they go up to the upper room, Peter, James, and John, and, and all of them other boys, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Up there in that upper room waiting. Hallelujah. So they waited 10 days. It had to be 10 days. Because they spent 40 of the 50 with Jesus after his life passion. 
And so there's 10 more days. And the Bible says in Acts the second chapter and verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were in one place with one accord. Come on somebody. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Come on and say amen. And the Bible says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak in other tongues. And the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And tongues of fire. Amen. Come and sat on each of their heads. Because they couldn't just get the Holy Ghost. They had to get the fire to go along with it. Come on and say yes. Yeah. Yeah. And God began to do a work with them. Hallelujah. In that upper room. He began to transform them. Because a new organism. A man was coming forth. A man, a new era was springing forth. It was the bride and the body of Jesus. It was his church. The one that he said, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Moving in the upper room. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that was in the upper room. Ah, can I preach for just a few minutes? They will get that up a roof. Hallelujah, devout Jews and men from every place under the sun. Yeah, there were some Egyptian Jews there. There were some Cyrenian Jews there. There were some people from Phrygia and Pamphylia. There were people from Samaria there. They got all they got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And all these different nationalities begin to speak in other tongues. But the thing about it, when they begin to speak, everybody can understand each other. In other words, I may have been speaking in French, and you were speaking Italian. But when you spoke, and when I spoke, we can hear the same thing. When the Holy Ghost comes, it brings us all together. If you say you got the Holy Ghost, and you got a divided spirit, it can't be the Holy Ghost that God sent out of heaven. Because the Holy Ghost gives you one mind, and it gives you one desire. It puts you in one place, and it puts you in one accord. How can you say you got the Holy Ghost, and you're hating your brothers, and you're hating your sisters? How can you say you got the Holy Ghost, and you ain't got no love in your heart? You're cussing folk out, you're slamming doors and acting crazy. Yeah. Hallelujah, see them drunk. Yeah. 
Amen. There must have been some signs going on. Amen. To let you know that it looked like drunk folks. Oh, yeah. Come on and say yeah. yeah. Amen. Anybody ever seen a drunk man before? Oh, yeah. Amen. Drunk and inebriated folk. Don't act normal like everybody. When you see somebody drunk, hallelujah, there's a difference between being tipsy and being drunk. Some folks is tipsy, but ain't quite got drunk yet. Oh, God, don't y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Some folks tipsy. They took a few sips. They got a buzz. Yeah, they're starting to feel all right. Amen. But they ain't drunk. Because they still got control of their faculties. They still can come in and go out when they get ready. But let somebody get fully immersed and, and drunk. Ah, they can't even hardly walk. They're staggering. Need somebody to hold them up. Oh, yes. Drunk folk. Ain't got no pride. One shirt out and the other tucked in. Slobbering over their words. Trying to talk to you. But when they sober, you can't get a word out of them. When they sober, they suck up sleep and mind their own business. But when they get a little of that juice lit up in them, they talking about everything. And they know everything because they're intoxicated. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
It was important. Yeah. Glory, Glory God, that was so important. Yeah, yeah. It was so important yeah, yeah. that John said, I'm baptizing you with water, uh -huh. but you need to get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He said, one that's coming after me is going to give you the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and I. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. The Holy Ghost was so important yeah. that yeah. Jesus, before he left his disciples, he said, don't go establish nothing. Don't go preach nothing. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait until you be endowed with power. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, what you gonna preach about? If you ain't been filled with the Holy Ghost, what can you preach? You can't preach the fullness of the gospel. Every seminary can only teach a certain thing, but you take the Holy Ghost to give the revelation of the word. Sometimes you look for a preacher, you're looking for an old educated dummy. Amen. Somebody got DD behind his name. Huh? Hallelujah. Got a doctorate in divinity. And all of that stuff is nice. But when I need a demon cast out, I can't throw my papers at the devil. When I need to be healed in my body, I can't throw my education at the devil. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost comes, you ain't got to play around. Yeah. 
Yeah. When the Holy Ghost comes, yeah. the Holy Ghost will move on his own. Yes. The Holy Ghost is real. Yes. The Holy Ghost ain't got to have no help. Yes. Glory to God, it'll begin to move. Yes. How do you hide no praise God? You'll sit there and try to hold your peace. Yes. You'll sit there and try to be yes. sedated if you want to yes. die. But something will keep on moving. Yes. 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 The Holy Ghost from God. Deacon, so 
so-and-so. You call a mother so-and-so. But she ain't nothing but an old witch. When you reach crap and reach in the church, say yeah. Everybody's scared of her. Sometimes God want to 
make a move. And you say, not so, Lord. Sometimes God wants to change things up. But you're so stuck in the way you used to do. You won't let God move like you want to move. But you better get out of the way so God can have his way. Get out of the way so God can do what he wants to do. Get out of the way so God can say who he wants to say. We act like there's we four and no more. Can't nobody else come in the church and be a part of the church. Can't nobody else come and be saved. I found my seat and nobody better sit in my seat. And you sit in my seat when you come to church. I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable because this is my seat. This is my job. The devil is a liar. God wants somebody that'll move when he say move. God wants somebody that'll act when he say act. He's tired of you being stuck in one place. Sometimes when you come to church, sometimes you have to find a new church. Sometimes you have to do something different. Sometimes you have to sing a new song. Not so old. I ain't never ate nothing. Coming well, uh-huh. and unclean. Yep. And the Lord said, What I cleanse, what you dare call a coming and unclean. Amen. Amen. Meaning I've got a people prepared. Yeah. I've got a people prepared. Yeah. Y'all ain't hearing me? Oh, yeah. I got a people prepared. Hallelujah. I've already cleaned. Yeah. Hallelujah. 